Welcome to Jay's Gamepad everybody and all my G's out there. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'd like to ask if you could please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification if you like man's content. Now before I start this review I just want to make it clear that I have played this game on the PS4 Pro and I have at least put in 50 hours in playing Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Now with that being said this is my review of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mans need to pray to the gaming gods before I start this review. Please forgive me. Please, the gaming gods, forgive me. J Retro Lee, please forgive me for the sins I have committed in waiting and procrastinating in regards to playing such a godlike game like Final Fantasy 7 Remake. The game was sitting on my shelf for months on end and I did not touch it, I did not play it. I had my brothers, my Nakama friends telling me to play the game, I was still procrastinating. I had other content creators and my viewers leaving comments on my videos cussing me, telling me why haven't I played this game and I still procrastinated. Please forgive me, please forgive me and it will never happen again. In future endeavours, when Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2 or whatever it's going to be called comes out, I will be playing it on release date. I will not wait, I will not procrastinate. Please forgive me. The gaming gods, please forgive me. Final Fantasy 7 Remake, an action JRPG made using the Unreal Engine, which is surprising because I actually thought that this game was made using the Luminous Engine, but they must have like learnt a lot from Final Fantasy 15 and thought we can't make this game on the Luminous Engine. So they made it on the Unreal Engine 4, made by Square Enix, Team Division 1. I think it was Division 2 that made 15 again, but another Team Division 1, they made this game. Now, this whole game is centered and based in the metropolis cyberpunk world of Midgard. Like a steampunk cyberpunk world. That's what this game is based in. And you've got the main playable character, the main protagonist, the god, the goat, the don, Cloud Strife, ex soldier. You've got your team members like Beret, Tifa, Ares. And Red 13, other characters like Red 13 that comes later in the game. You got side characters like Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse. And you've got the evil corporation, Shinra, the electric company. President Shinra, Rufus Shinra, you've got the Turks, Reno, and Rude. And you've got the main villain, the main antagonist, Sephiroth, the god, the goat. The devil, the demon, the alien, Sephiroth. This whole world, these characters, is just mind blowing. Mind fucking blowing. In this game, you've got nine summons. To get these summons, you need material. You either acquired them, you either get given them, or you acquired them somehow. But you get these summons through material. You get summons like Ifrid, Shifa. Chocobo and Moogle, get Fat Chocobo, Leviathan and Bahamut. There are other summons that you get, but you only get them through like, you know, digital deluxes edition and base pre-order bonuses and stuff like that. You know, three of the summons like Carbuncle, Captors and Chocobo Chick. So if you didn't pre-order the game or you didn't get the deluxe or anything like that, you're probably not going to get these other summons, which is a bit annoying. But I'm hoping that they are going to bring out another version or like a complete version with all the DLC. Because it'd be nice to play it for those that didn't pre-order it. I couldn't pre-order it for whatever reason. But these are the summons, the GFs, whatever you want to call them, Guardian Forces, that you can have to use to fight with you. You acquire them by basically, most of the time, like you gotta fight them. Once you beat them, they join your team and you can use them. This whole world, these characters, these summons, fucking godlike. So godlike. Now, one of the things that I always thought about before the game came out and before I played it was, 
how was Midgard going to look? How was it going to feel? Like, was it going to be like an open world, like Final Fantasy XV, you can run around, do what you want, go where you want? Or was it going to be very linear, very corridor based, narrow, like Final Fantasy XIII? Now, I say that to say that when I play Final Fantasy XIII, or should I say I try to play it, one of the things that I hated about that game was the fact that it was very linear, very corridor based and very narrow and it pissed me off. What I loved about Final Fantasy XV was the fact that it was open world, you can go where you want, do what you want, you can, was it like this adventure, it was free, apart from the latter end of the game, but this was before Royal Edition. And I kind of wondered like how was the developers going to construct Midgard? Now when I finally played the game and I realised it was quite linear, with like hub worlds and stuff like that I was it I was actually like was it quite pleased with it and it made sense it worked and it worked because when you think about it you're in the city of Midgard you're in the city now when you think about being in most cities like you've got loads of roads back roads streets and stuff like that you've got park areas you've got hub areas and it kind of like reflected how how was it how real cities kind of are anyway like you can go to a park and stuff in Final Fantasy 7 you've got hub areas like Walmart that you can go to so it just made sense you know what I mean the fact that you can go to the slums or you've got the plate above you where you can run around but you've got all these streets and these houses and these buildings it's a city and it made sense to me now anybody that's played the original Final Fantasy 7 game you know that this one is mainly in Midgard and beyond that you kind of get to like you know go out into the world and it's more open and free now the fact that Midgard is constructed the way it is and it's quite linear and stuff like that, it never bothered me and I actually liked it and I thought it was fun and it worked for the game and, and like I said, it just made sense. So this is part of the reason why that I love the world of Midgard because in a way, it kind of has that authentic feeling of you are in this like metropolis, cyberpunk, steampunk world city. It just makes sense to me and yeah, I really liked it. The story in this game is so fucking good. So good. What's the story saying? What is the story saying? The story is saying we're staying true to original but we're also taking creative liberties. And I love that. I love that because to be honest with you, I didn't want a carbon copy of the story that we got in the original. As good as the story was in the original, I wouldn't want a carbon copy. I want Square Enix to take liberties, creative liberties with the story while staying true to the original. And that's what they did. They did that. The story is so good. It's so immersive, so engrossing. Now, for anybody that's played the original Final Fantasy VII, you know what the story is. Cloud Strife, ex-soldier member, elite fighting force from the Shinra Electric Company, joins the eco terrorist group Avalanche where he meets Barrett and Tifa and Wedge and Biggs and Jesse to blow up one of their Maca reactors where after they have to deal with the fallout, they go on this crazy epic journey with all these twists and turns and Cloud basically has to deal with his past, present and future. And playing this remake it keeps you on your toes because even though that they are staying true that they managed to find a way to creatively go into another direction which is so good i love that i love that because it's merging the past with the present and the future in regard to the story i really like that now the story centers around the same characters and a lot of the same things that happened in the original game happens in this game but they just tend to happen in a unique different way some things happen kind of how they happen and a lot of other things happen in the same time kind of in the same place and kind of in the same way but different and i like that because that is what it's about when you're telling the story the story is so much fun the way that they introduce all these characters and the characters in this game. I love the characters. I love the way the characters look. I love their character design. I love the voice actors. The voice acting was so good A1. The motion capture on their face and the way their lips move and their eyes. It looks really, really good. I love the characters in this game. 
there wasn't one character in this game here that I thought to myself, do you know what, they fucking got on my nerves and I can't take them. Apart from the characters that were meant to be like that. Like the villains, like there's certain characters that you just like hate. But you're meant to hate them because the story dictates that you're meant to hate them. And that's good. The fact that like the way that these characters are written, the way the story's written, it's just it takes you down this unpredictable journey, this fun, unpredictable journey with these characters and these other characters in the game, in the original game that wasn't really major characters. They were in the game, they were side characters, but they fleshed them out. They 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 breathed breathe life into them into this game and I love that I really like that because I see certain things I see certain characters I see certain moments and I, and I think to myself I remember that moment I remember that character oh my god and look at what they're doing with them and I, I just love that because it keeps was it, it keeps the game fresh it keeps the story fresh it keeps these characters fresh I love these characters I love Cloud I love Tifa I love all of them I love the journey we go on you can clearly see that they've taken a lot of inspiration from Final Fantasy Ad for Children. Like you can clearly see that. And I'm cool with that. I'm perfectly cool with that. And well, apart from Barrett. Barrett, well, Barrett doesn't look like he character designed Ad for Children. But you can see they've taken certain elements. And again, I love it. I love the character designs. The detail to the characters, the attention to the detail to the motion capture, the way the game feels, the way the game looks. Graphically, this game is phenomenal. The world of Midgar looks phenomenal. I don't see any fuckeries in regards to the graphics in this game. Nothing major that really spoiled it for me. Overall, I thought the graphics was really, really good. Now, I, now, I don't know if it's this good because of the Unreal Engine. I don't know. I don't, was it? I would more say it's you know, like Division Team One or whatever they're called. Like I think they've done an amazing job in terms of the graphics in this game. Now, the gameplay and system. Is, is 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 a character in itself it's one of the highlights and bonus of this game if this game didn't have a good system good gameplay and good system this game could still survive and you're probably asking how or why like why would it survive how would it survive it would survive because it's a rpg or correction jrpg to be more precise Games like this are based on story. It needs to have really good story and really good characters. As long as most RPGs have got godlike story, godlike characters, and an average gameplay, most RPGs would do well. Like they was able to take a turn-based system on the OG Final Fantasy game and incorporate into this in an action RPG and make it work and make the game tactical, strategic making you think about what team you're going to have. Now, in battle, when you're fighting, you only have a team of three. Apart from at the end, you kind of have a team of four, but you can't really control like the full character. But you basically have three characters, and it's basically action RPG. Anybody that's played Final Fantasy XV, it's kind of similar to that, or like similar to Crisis Core. You can clearly see that they've taken the best elements from Final Fantasy Crisis Core and Final Fantasy XV and they've incorporated it into this game and they made it their own and the fact that they was able to do that is just so much fun it, that they, like this game is fun I didn't think that this game would be that fun because I remember when I played the original Final Fantasy VII I loved that game you know what I'm saying I wasn't in love with it because it took me a while to get into that game and play I must have played it like three times before I actually like got into it and started to enjoy it but that game is good but the fighting system I was never really into the turn base. I really like started to love turn based gameplay system when I played Final Fantasy VIII. It wasn't even seven that made me like it, it was eight. So the fact that they was able to have a action RPG system and 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 incorporate the turn base is amazing to me. I, I really, really, really love that. Now when it comes to upgrading your characters and your weapons. The way they've done it with the system is quite cool. Quite similar to um, quite a few other Final Fantasy games, but it's quite a unique way that they do it. All Final Fantasy games kind of have the similar way you can level up your characters and your weapons and stuff, but they kind of do it in, in like a unique way. And the way that Final Fantasy VII Remake does it is that it kind of has like this grid, and it kind of it's kind of based around your weapons. So each character will have weapons, and each weapon will have its own grid. And in the grid, you're able to upgrade and level up your HP, your MP points, your basically your attack, 
your defense, your attack to magic, your um, was it defense to magic, it gives you extra material slots to equip more material onto that weapon and that's basically how you level up your character and you basically do that through like battles, through getting experience points and through experience points you also get SP points and SP points are the points that actually allow you to upgrade your weapons which in turn allows you to upgrade your characters and your uh, base ability shall I say. So Cloud for example, like uh, the Buster Sword, when you go into the Buster Sword, uh, you, you want to upgrade the Buster Sword, it opens up like this upgrade grid and it will have like the base core abilities of the Buster Sword and you basically like when you get um, like HP points, you use HP points to actually upgrade all these abilities and when you do that like another um, like was it like another branch will open up so it might be like Buster Sword like level 1, Buster Sword level 2 and like level 3, level 4 and all these other like sections like branches off like and you can basically upgrade them. So like with the weapons and the bangles and accessories you can actually get them through battle you can get them from finding it in like the world of Midgar and you can also get through shops and stuff like that. Now the bangles you can't really upgrade the bangles well maybe you can because you can incorporate like material to it so maybe in a way you can upgrade it depending on what material you have to it. but you can't actually upgrade the actual bangle itself. Bangles will have base stats and stuff like that depending on what ones you find or whatever it might increase your XP or, or was it all your MP or whatever it's going to be or like your defense to something you know what I mean like physical defense or whatever but you can't but you can't upgrade it the same way you can upgrade your weapons like with your weapons like you get like you like with it, like your base abilities with that weapon then you might get like um the buster sword level one that will open up and buster sword level two that will open up as well and it's kind of like that with all the weapons with all the characters which is really cool the accessories you can't upgrade you can't upgrade the accessories you just get the accessories and they give you certain stats so it might give you like an extra 10 was it 10 percent or 20 percent like a, was it like magic attack or something like that it's kind of how it works so you kind of just got to find the accessories when you play the game in the world and stuff and you kind of just equip them to certain characters depending on how you want to have your characters like me i had cloud as the main attacker i had barrett kind of like backing him up but also like my second attacker also had uh, tifa as my, also my like my first slash second attacker as well she does the physical attack and i had Ares as just like my um was it like my uh, healer you know what i'm saying like defense just defense magic barrier stuff like that you know what i'm saying like to assist the other characters that's kind of how i have it so obviously you can only pick three characters so i might have cloud tifa and aries and aries would be in the back you know what i'm saying like uh, casting barrier like making sure that the mp and hp doesn't drop too low with the other characters and stuff like that so that's i mean like that's how you kind of well that's how i was using the characters You've got certain characters that have like more specific jobs, shall I say. So Cloud, he's an attacker. That's what I would say. Like, I wouldn't use Cloud as a defensive character. You just wouldn't. He's not really built like that. So that's kind of how the system kind of works with the material, upgrading, leveling up your characters, your weapons and so forth and so on. And I love it. The same way that you're able to equip your material to your weapons and to your accessories is the same way that you can equip your material summon to your characters. Each character has a material slot for the summons. Now the thing is is that in a battle you're only able to summon one summon at a time. I haven't seen any circumstances or any situation where you're able to summon more than one summon at a time or one after the other. It's just one at a time which is cool because to be honest with you they are super powerful. They are just like gods. So how it works when you summon your summons in battle is that basically you have like a bar like a time scale of like how long you can have your summon in the battle now in that battle each character's basically got a uh, AP meter and it's basically got two bars now when you're fighting your summon will just fight with you so if you're just fighting an enemy you what's it, your summon will just kind of come over just throw a couple punches and kicks do certain things and stuff like that now when you use one of the AP bars your summon will do like a special move or something like that and you can use any of your any of the three characters that you use in AP bar and if you use uh, like two AP bars it does like a more powerful kind of like special super move kind of thing then when the main bar like the, the summon bar goes down they do like this godlike super which basically just destroys the whole area destroys the enemies and stuff that's kind of like how the summons work when you summon them but they are essentially like another character like you can't like 
directly control them like the same way that you can control your like your main three characters but in a sense you can control the actions and the things that they do depending on what you're doing and how you use the AP bar now depending on the enemy that you're fighting if they have a weakness to uh, fire then it might benefit you to actually pick Ifrit or if the enemy has a weakness to ice then it might benefit you to pick Shiva in the battle it just depends on the weaknesses of the enemies and it's the same in regards to like what magic to use or the way that you fight enemies and you kind of just like plan accordingly and the fact that you've got the turn base it actually allows you to do that which is really really cool the score and music in this game is fucking phenomenal it is epic it is everything that i expected and didn't expect in the same breath the music in this game is so fucking godlike it literally is like an amalgamation of what they've done with final fantasy 7 with final fantasy crisis core and final fantasy Advent children it's literally like an amalgamation of that and even then they still managed to like create new new themes new scores new tracks i love the music in this game like it's got everything like i downloaded the soundtrack straight away after i played the game and i was like listening to all these music and the fact that like it gives you that feeling of nostalgia from the original game and from the other games that you played but like in this modern unique way i love it i was i think the composer's done an amazing job with the music in this game i love the soundtrack and i'm even willing to go as far to say that this soundtrack is probably one of my favorite soundtracks this year i think the soundtrack and music in this game is so so good and the voice acting as well like i mentioned before the voice acting it's it's just like that was it the actors done an amazing job the actors have done an amazing job bringing these characters to life if it wasn't for the actors we was it this game wouldn't be what it is i was it i strongly believe that like i said before like this game has to have really good story and really good characters and you need really good voice actors as well. The fact that like when I think about like the characters from the original Final Fantasy VII game, like when like when I think about Cloud or Barrett or how they might sound, yes, you can read like what they're saying and you kind of see like the way that their characters are moving around and stuff. Like you kind of like picture a a a, a voice in your, was it in your head of how they would sound or how they would actually speak. And I I generally feel like this game and and these voice actors manage to meet my expectations of how these characters would sound and the way that they would speak. They've done an amazing, an amazing job. And even like, and, e and even the sound effects as well, like, like with like the fighting and the clashes of weapons and everything, like it just sounds so good. And it just brings that like, that, that next level of immersiveness in this game. The sound, the score, the music, the voice acting, the sound effects, everything in this game when it comes to music and sound effects, beautiful. There was no like, was it like character speaking and like the voice was out of sync, there was nothing like that. There was none of this like swords were clashing, then like you're hearing the sound effects of the swords clashing like seconds after, there was none of that. Everything was on point A1, top tier, beautiful. So. The composers, the voice actors, everyone, they have done an amazing job when it came to the score, music, sound effects, and the voice acting. Beautiful. Now, do I have any bad things to say about this game? Are there any negative, bad issues that kicked me out of this game, that ruined my experience, or made me think to myself, I wish that they would have just like tidied it up. I wish that this was it in the game. I wish that they would have just fixed this or that. Is there any of that in this game? And to be honest with you, no, not really. I mean, there might be like one or two minute things, but nothing major. I mean, nothing majorly that's going to like ruin my experience or ruined my experience, should I say. There is nothing like that in this game. Like, if anything, like I noticed that there was a few late graphical poppings, like like a second or two late. Like nothing like you're waiting five, ten seconds for something to pop in. Nothing like that, and it very rarely happened. And I also did notice that when you're in the slums and you go to like Cloud's like um, room that he sleeps in in the slums, like I did notice that the was it all the doors to that apartment block or whatever, like they didn't have any texture. 
and I, and I literally thought to myself, oh okay, it's probably gonna pop in, and it just never popped in, and I reset my PS4, turned it back on, and it just like has no texture on the door. And it's weird because we've had like quite a few updates, like maybe, like maybe about two, three updates for Final Fantasy VII Remake, and they just haven't fixed it. And I don't know why they haven't fixed it, or if they've noticed it, or if anybody's complained about it, but I've noticed it. And this was pretty much early in the game. So I think that's why it kind of stood out to me, but it's not a big issue, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not a major issue. And I suppose you could also say that like the further you get into the game, you start to notice certain um, graphic, what's it like? You start to notice that the quality of graphics with certain things are not as good as they were in the beginning, but it's nothing major, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, this game starts at a very, very high bar. And when it drops, it's still at a very, very high bar. So I don't really have anything bad or negative to really say. There was nothing that ruined my experience. There was nothing that made me think to myself like they cut corners and they were being slapdash. There was none of that in regards to this game. So yeah, there was a few things that like, you know, a few little nitpicks that I thought to myself, oh, okay, I just noticed it because I've got the eye, you know what I'm saying? I've got the creative eye, so I can see certain things that I probably shouldn't be able to see, but I see them. So, but apart from that, nah, you know what I'm saying? But they're like the only bad things that I notice, if you want to call them bad. So yeah, that's that really. My final thoughts. What are my final thoughts? This game is godlike. This game is fucking godlike i can't believe that i got to play and experience a game like this i can't believe it i really can't believe it this game is a beautiful piece of art a beautiful piece of art like this game is near perfect and i don't even believe in perfection or perfect as an artist and graphic designer and there's scientists out there as well. The one thing that artists and scientists have in common is that we strive for perfection while knowing that we will never achieve it because it's about the science, it's about the art, it's about that goal and that journey of trying to obtain and, and, ob and achieve perfection. And I literally feel like I have just played and experienced a near perfect game. This game is fucking godlike. The world of Midgard, the story and the journey that it takes you on, the beautiful characters, the godlike music, the epic battles, the beautiful story and the liberties that they took with it, the creative liberties. I love everything about this fucking game. This game is godlike. Godlike. This game has replayability this game has a chapter select which is like a new game plus it allows you to keep all your abilities your moves your levels everything that you've acquired and play your game again so much so yeah that like i've played so many games where they've been really good but they don't have new game plus and and that alone has pissed me off that alone has made me not want to play the game again ever but this game has this feature and I actually want to play the game again. So much so, I've, was it, I've actually got other games sitting on my shelf that need to be played, that I should be playing and I don't want to play them because I want to play this game again from beginning to end. I feel like I need to play this game again. I need to play this game again. This game is fucking God, like I can't believe what they did. I can't believe the experience. And do you know what? Yeah, the way that this game is and the way that the game ends, it has me so looking forward to Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two, whatever the game is gonna be called. It has me looking forward to that. The possibilities of where they could take the story, the open world. I hope it's gonna be open world like it was on this too, on the original Final Fantasy game. I, I just can't fucking wait. I hope and pray that we get the open world. I hope and pray that they take us on this amazing journey with the story because 
this game is fucking beautiful. It took me on this crazy roller coaster ride and I was not bored, I was not pissed, I wasn't kicked out or taken out of this game, not once. This game is everything that I hoped it would be and it's more. Do you know what, yeah? If I had to give this game a final score, I had to give it a 9.5 out of 10 with a strong recommendation to buy and keep this game. You can buy this game for like £20, £25 now. You know what I'm saying? Like, go and buy the game. This game is so good. Deep, was it? This game is for everybody. Doesn't matter what type of genre of game that you've played, this game is meant for everybody to at least play and try. Even if you can't afford it, go and download the demo. It's on a PSN store. You can download it for free. Download it, play it. Maybe that'll make you want to go and buy the game. But this game is a beautiful piece of creative art. The people that made this game, they are geniuses. They are geniuses. I can't believe that we got a game like this. This game is phenomenal. This game is beautiful. This game is godlike. And I'm giving this game a 9.5 out of 10 with a strong recommendation to buy and keep it. So that was my review of Final Fantasy VII Remake. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. If it was, again, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification if you like this content or any of my content. You can also hit me up on the social, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Jay's Gamepad across the board. You ain't got to type, tap, press, anything else but that. And if there's a way that you feel that I can improve my reviews, my videos, my content, or this channel, please email me at jaysgamepad at gmail.com. Much appreciated. So with that being said, I guess I will see you and speak to you real soon.